All right. Hi and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Staat, and um, I am with the Max Planck Institute for Security and Privacy in Bochum, Germany. And in this talk, I present our paper, IR Shield, a countermeasure against adversarial physical layer wireless sensing. And this is a joint work um, with my collaborators um, from TH Köln, Cologne University of Applied Sciences, and at Ruhr University, Bochum. So most of us have all kind of wireless devices at home, and these surround us in our daily lives. And uh, to just give a few examples, um, these are smartphones, computers, Internet of Things, and um, smart home devices. And all of those rely on wireless communications. So while the data those devices transmit may be cryptographically secured, um, the underlying radio signal propagation can still reveal sensitive information. And um, that is, radio signal propagation depends strongly on the environment of devices. And as we can see in the illustration on the right hand side, um, transmitted signals are reflected by the environment and change um, such as such, such, uh, when there is um, say environmental variation such as uh, a moving individual. And um, this can be observed then by an adversary who um, places a receiver on the outside of this, um, of this environment. So by overhearing standard communication signals, as we have seen before, um, there are known sequences which uh, allow the estimation of wireless channels. And um, this then um, gives the adversary the opportunity to monitor victim premises. And in our paper, we introduce a novel countermeasure um, against such attacks, which is based on intelligent reflecting surfaces. And in particular, the system which we call IR Shield um, is specifically designed to mitigate um, privacy violations due to adversarial wireless sensing. And IR Shield partly randomizes the um, propagation environment while it is device agnostic and does not affect the wireless quality of service. So we demonstrate that IR Shield defeats a state of the art human motion detection scheme. In our experiments, we used Wi-Fi devices, um, and each Wi-Fi packet begins with a preamble, and this is a known and standardized waveform. So based on this preamble, the receiver estimates the wireless channel, which is necessary to um, demodulate the subsequently received symbols. And um, apart from this, this channel estimate, which is also known as channel state information, or short uh, CSI, can also be used for wireless sensing. So actually, there is an entire line of research um, which actually which looks into how these CSI data can be uh, processed for various sensing purposes. Yeah? And there are some exemplary sensing tasks which I have listed here, and these include um, detection of motion, of uh, recognition of gestures, of keystrokes, or even vital sign monitoring. Yeah? And importantly, because of the broadcast nature of uh, radio wave propagation, a passive eavesdropper can simply overhear these signals and uh, likewise apply this processing. And naturally, this has um, severe privacy implications. So such an attack was um, implemented in a recent paper of um, Tsu et al. presented at NDSS 2020. And um, here the authors proposed a human motion detection scheme Mm, where, um, where the attacker, where the adversary eavesdropped Wi-Fi signals. So we took this paper and implemented the attack and we placed a Wi-Fi router in a room to constantly transmit um, packets which are received by a second party and uh, the second party is on the outside. So the second router here is the passive eavesdropper and um, listening to the Wi-Fi traffic from the um, from the inside on a publicly, publicly accessible place. So we, when the environment is steady, the adversary observes a rather constant um, CSI amplitude over time. And uh, when there is motion now, the adversary observes strong signal variation in the environment over time. So and it is, um, this variation is particularly strong near the line of sight. Um, but um, 
also between is like noticeable in in other regions apart from the line of sight when when motion takes place um, further away. So to quantify this variation, the authors of the original paper uh, used the sliding standard deviation on these observations. And here we can see that the two cases, um, with and without motion, are uh, well distinguishable. So the adversary uses a reference measurement to determine a detection threshold. And um, using this threshold, the um, adversary then effectively detects motion in the entire room. So in our work, we design a countermeasure against such attacks based on intelligent reflecting surfaces, or short IRS. And an IRS is a synthetic surface which is similar to a large antenna array, and it provides reflective propagation path between a radio transmitter and a receiver. And most importantly, however, the IRS is digitally configurable to um, adjust its reflection behavior. So this can be used to then create smart radio environments. And in particular, the IRS that we used um, can multiply each reflection amplitude either by minus one or plus one, allowing to um, optimize the sum of the reflections which arrives at the receiver. So when we now take a closer look at the complex valued signal propagation um, components of the wireless channel, um, there is an uncontrollable portion um, and there is an IRS controllable portion. And in a wireless communication context, this portion can be optimized, uh, for example, say to maximize or minimize even uh, the received signal path. So as we designed IR Shield, we resolved the following key challenges. So first of all, IR Shield is capable of standalone operation independent of the wireless devices in the room. So this was particularly challenging because an IRS is typically carefully integrated into the wireless infrastructure um, and thus it requires some interaction with the parties which are involved. And um, Second, the IRS which we use is a binary configurable IRS and it has 256 elements. So this gives us a configuration space of 2 to the 256. So obviously this is too large to, to extract tailored um, configurations and um, we came up with a solution which circumvents um, or which finds these, these configurations which are suited. And finally, um, we wanted IR Shield to leave the uh, wireless communication quality of service unaffected. So as I have outlined before, the adversary motion detection is based on detecting signal variation which indicates motion in the environment. So now with the IRS, we gain the capability of um, producing artificial signal variation in the channel, like towards radio waves only, and um, the IRS can now be used to, to also produce signal variation, which then diminishes the adversary's success in correctly detecting the motion in the environment. So effectively, IR Shield obfuscates the mapping from signal variation to motion. So we want to produce signal variation with the IRS. And to do so, we randomly select 5% of the IRS elements and flip their state and repeat this uh, 20 times a second. And in effect, um, there are gradual randomized changes on the signal amplitude, um, which are observed by the adversary now. However, remember that the adversary applies the sliding standard deviation. And um, when we look at the sliding standard deviation, it uh, remains rather low and does not yet mimic um, the effect of human motion in the environment. So to resolve this, um, and in order to create an increased sliding standard deviation, um, we now interleave this, these gra gradual randomized changes with an additional inversion of the IRS. And the inversion step is illustrated here as the 100% in, uh, in the time series. Um, I mean, it changes all of, the hundred per, all of the IRS elements, and this yields stronger signal variation because there is more variation. Um, 
And indeed, as we can see here from, from the plots, um, the sliding standard deviation on the bottom now uh, exhibits um, stronger variations which are similar to the effect of human motion um, in the environment. So here we again see the results of our motion detection experiment. And importantly, um, the adversary can well distinguish the uh, cases with and without motion. And also the threshold um, derived from the, from the reference measurement is like appropriate to detect the motion correctly. And um, now when we enabled IR shield and repeated the, the same experiment, we first observed that the adversary derives an overly high threshold and thus, um, and thus misses like most of the motion taking place. And um, the adversary so does not detect motion any longer. Um, further, for some parts of the experiment, um, the cases without and with motion uh, become barely distinguishable and um, in these regions, motion, uh, motion detection becomes even infeasible. However, for some other parts uh, with particularly strong channel variation or signal variation due to the motion, um, in principle, motion could still be detected. And um, so next, we, we will now look at how, um, like how well, of how this, um, this, this residual detectability um, is, is distributed in the spatial domain, like uh, answer the question, where can motion still be detected? So here we see the spatial distribution of the detection rates and um, without, um, without IR shield being active. And um, now when we enable IR shield, the detection is largely suspended in the entire environment. And, um, the detection rates um, drop to 0% except at uh, very close to the transmitter. I'm not sure whether this is visible here on the, on the screen, but there remains some 5% visibility in the, um, like close to the transmitting devices. And um, as I pointed out before, um, one mechanism why air shield works is because of the miscalibration of the adversary's threshold. And now when we assume that the adversary is aware of our countermeasure, um, an improved threshold finding can restore some of the detection capabilities of the adversary. And as we can see here, um, the detectability using an improved um, threshold finding is um, restored within the line of sight. And thus, um, we recommend to position wireless devices in an environment that should be protected such that motion in the environment could only or best not take place is always unlikely to take place within possible line of sight to an adversary which is positioned on the outside. On this slide we see the uh, packet error rates of the Wi-Fi communication, or short the PERs, and um, here we see the packet error rates with and without IR shield as a function of the modulation scheme in use. Um, so when we increase the MCS setting, which is a Wi-Fi specific term, we increase the, um, like basically the transmission speed because we use higher order modulations. And what we can see is that um, IR shield does not degrade uh, the packet error rate when it is already low. But um, for higher PERs, when there is already a high p the packet error rate um, because higher order modulations in this case were more susceptible to noise. So this is, indicates that um, we, we, we then, we did this measurement in a, in a not in a high SNR setting. Um, we also observed that IR shield does also not uh, improve the packet error rates. And overall we can conclude that IR shield does neither degrade nor uh, improve the wireless quality of service. This slide concludes the talk. Um, we have introduced IR Shield as a novel channel obfuscation scheme, which is independent of devices, of waveforms, and wireless standards because it directly operates on the physical layer using the intelligent reflecting surface. We have designed the algorithms um, to configure the IRS um, to operate in a plug and play operation. And we have shown that it does not degrade the wireless quality of service. Finally, we have investigated um, our shield against a state-of-the-art human motion detection scheme and um, showed that it can um, reduce 
the detection rates to 5% or less. And also our data sets are publicly available and um, please check them out and I'm happy to take questions. Okay, I'm Surya there from Penn State. Uh, this is fantastic, but I have a couple of questions. So you said that uh, the individual cells on, like I'm just calling themselves, uh, are either, like you can set the reflectivity in, yeah, on that panel. So let's say that you have configured this IR shield to battle your adversary, right? Uh, what would happen if the adversary now repositions themselves? Um, we have actually considered this. We have uh, multiple adversarial positions in, a, in the paper. And um, in fact, we, one important thing is that we have not optimized the IOS configurations to the adversary's position. In the talk here, I only considered one position of the adversary, but we have multiple um, transmitting, um, transmitter positions and multiple adversary positions and combinations of them in the paper. Um, but because you, you, I mean, the, the, the receiver in our case is hostile. So we have no control over the receiver and we don't know the channel to the receiver. We don't even know that the attack is ongoing because the attacker operates passively. And um, this is also the reason why we introduced a, a, a probabilistic algorithm which is based on randomization of the IRS surface. So, um, so the, the optimization uh, example which I give here is only to illustrate the effect of the IRS on what it can, can do. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's like a one-shot answer uh, for my question. Uh, my other question is, um, what material is that? And how do you, like, what's the mechanism that you use to alter the reflectivity? I'm really curious. And also, what radios did you use? OK, um, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, this is actually something which I have omitted in the talk uh, because it would have gone way too much into detail. Um, the, the, the IRS prototypes was actu were actually manufactured by our colleagues from, from the TH Köln, um, Markus Heinrichs and Rainer Kronberger, and um, they have done, done a fantastic job in designing these devices. And um, they are basically um, simple FR4 PCB material. So they, they are pretty cheap. Um, so there's a, there's a, I have a photo of them. Um, there, there is a microcontroller on the back side. Uh, which controls, like here we can see the configuration circuitry. There are shift registers on them, and uh, we, we then program 256 bit words into these surfaces. So, um, and that's basically the mechanism, and by, like there's a unit sill which is re replicated like all over the surface to, to build the surface. And uh, this, like the reflection coefficient of each element is altered by, by switching a parasitic element of a pin diode. That's basically it. And so, so that's, that's very fundamental RF engineering. How big is it? Um, it's, it's 40 times 30 centimeters. Uh, just one more question uh, on the adaptive adversary. So if you had a, I mean, you're adding random noise, right? And uh, so did you consider settings where the adversary gets, you know, the person's moving back and forth in roughly the same location over and over again, and then you can, try to average uh, out some of the random background noise based on the uh, yeah. IR shield, yeah. Uh, and, and, and does it, is that effective? Is that a threat model that's relevant and that you considered? And what type of, what can IR shield do about it? Um, so what exactly do you mean by, by the background noise and the, um, Sorry, uh, so you're, you're, you're injecting this like randomized signal, yeah. like different, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm just wondering if you get multiple samples and a lot of like uh, masking schemes where you uh, inject randomness, if you can average it out somehow, then you may be able to recover the original like interference due to the human motion. Yeah. So I was asking like in this yeah. context, if you have the person walking back and forth, you get lots of samples of that particular yeah. motion, et cetera. That, that's actually um, a, a good question, which we received receive multiple times thus far. And um, there are, there are, like theoretically, there are ways to to remove the effect of the IRS on the um, on the uh, on the actual adversarial observation. 
that would be possible um, in domains like, uh, say, the timer of arrival at the receiver, where you try to distinguish different signal components arriving at the receiver to, to, to maybe separate them. And another way would be to, to, to distinguish signals based on the angle of arrival, say. Um, but since the IRS in, in our case is like very close to the legitimate devices, um, when, when the attacker would like would do it's it they are not not well distinguishable from the from the actual signal yeah? because because the the IRS is rather close in our experiments to the to the actual transmitting device and um, we really we, we believe but that's future work actually um, that there is a, a power constraint on this because the IRS I mean it has only limited size so um, it can only reflect limited power so this is also the reason why um, why motion in the line of sight, for example, when I block the entire signal, there is huge signal variation with an with a extreme dynamic range. And it's then very hard to, to, to obfuscate the channel. Um, yeah, but, but we definitely will, will look into, into um, such schemes in the, in the future. Fantastic, let's uh, thank Paul again.